share my story, the essence of which will resonate with many of you. I am a stem cell scientist and have been blessed to have studied at some of the best and institu academic institutes in the world. I have confidently carried out lengthy conversations with the Master of St. John's College, Cambridge, uh, in the UK, in my shalwar kameez, without giving my entire a second thought. But everything changed post-2001. While doing my postdoctoral fellowship in the USA, I felt alienated. The negative press and hostile environment around immigrants, Muslims in particular, made me uncomfortable and uncomfortable about my identity. I realized that I would often avoid the question, where are you from? However, after moving to Canada, I felt my confidence and self-worth return. And I had Justin Trudeau's leadership and tolerant, inclusive ideas to thank. I feel that finally I can proudly be me again. So I would now like to invite Mr. Ahmed Hussain, who arrived here at 16 years of age as a refugee. His journey from then till today, being the Federal Minister of Immigration, reflects his hard work and dedication, as well as inclusive values and abundance of opportunities that our great country, Canada, has to offer. Welcome, Mr. Ahmed Hussain. Good evening. I think we can do better than that on a nice summer day. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you all uh, for coming. I'd like to begin by uh, inviting my colleague and my friend Salma Zahid, Member of Parliament for Scarborough Centre, to join me on the stage. Salma? I think she's on her way. Uh, probably just stuck in Oh. Is she here? Okay. <laughs> Hopefully she'll be here before uh, too long. I'd also like to begin by thanking a number of individuals, thanking you all, but also a number of individuals that really uh, went up above and beyond the call of duty to make this happen. Adnan and Tasneem, Zia, Dr. Mahmoud and Sadia, Arfa, Wajid, Wakas and Tariq, Mohammed, Ibrahim and Hussein Hamdani, whose wife is expecting any time soon. Thank you for making the sacrifice. Um, I want to begin. Uh, I want to begin my very brief remarks by quickly talking about why I personally ran for office. I ran for office um, mainly to fight for the community services that were there for me as a new immigrant to Canada, as someone who relied on those services to move ahead and to work hard and to get a helping hand. And I noticed that those services were increasingly not only under attack fiscally, but were also under attack philosophically. There were jokes about libraries and who needs libraries except elites. Well, I'll tell you who needs libraries. The young kid in Regent Park who needs to train their resume. That's who needs a library. Um, so, when I noticed that, I felt that I should look around and look for a home, a party that will accommodate my desire to represent people, to be a servant leader, and to fight for the community services that helped me so that those community services could be uh, preserved and expanded for the next generation. And I looked around and I noticed that uh, the Liberal Party was under the leadership of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. And at the time, he was the leader of the third party. And he was promising to bring a new kind of politics to the table. A politics that is about openness, about engagement, and about celebrating diversity. About arriving at solutions after consultations with ordinary Canadians. About injecting hope into the Canadian body politic, and about Hard work, because that's what it takes to win. So, fast forward to today, you can see what I saw then. 
a government that is investing in communities, which then leads to inclusive growth, not a growth that serves a few, but economic growth that picks up everyone and lifts up everyone. A government that is about hope and respect for all, as opposed to fear and division. A government that is about openness, engagement, and the celebration of diversity as a strength and not a weakness. A Canada that can finally head, hold its head high on the international stage by re-engaging with everyone. I just met the, uh, the Mozambican uh, ambassador to the United Nations a few days ago, and he said, what's amazing about Canada is your new government put together an international development uh, program after talking to each and every country that would get money from that program. He said, how global is that? And that is an example of what I'm talking about. So, uh, without further ado, I'd like you to join me in welcoming our leader, our party leader, my friend, and the Prime Minister of Canada, a leader that engages and listens and accepts as a government that we don't have all the answers, that we need all of you to contribute and tell us what you would like. Without further ado, please welcome Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. It's such a pleasure to be back in Toronto. Uh, it's great to see so many friends in the audience. Uh, it's also great to see so many new faces, and it's a real pleasure to see you all here as well. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Justine for being here, for her support, for her kind words. And I have to thank my colleague, Anna Ahmed, for his kind introduction. How about a round of applause for all of us? been doing terrific work as Canada's Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, a refugee himself. He came to Canada at 16, fleeing war, and now he's helping folks do exactly the same. It's an amazing story of things coming full circle. It's a story of Canada. So thank you, Ahmed, for your commitment not only to the people of York Southwestern, but also to the people of Canada and indeed to the world. Merci, mon ami. See, my friends, Ahmed's story is really the story of Canada. It's a story of a country we can all believe in. A country that values hard work, diversity, and community. A country that welcomes newcomers with open arms and open hearts. And whether you're coming here to flee persecution, to study, or to give your kids a shot at a great life, there is a place for you in Canada. That's the vision you all believe in, and you're in good company because the vast majority of Canadians believe in it too. <laughs> Nearly two years ago, our government was elected on a promise of real change, a promise to help people. Moms and dads, entrepreneurs and employees, students and seniors to get ahead. But the hard work of real change began long before the election, and it consisted of two key elements. First was a change in attitude and a de deliberate embrace of all people in all their diversity. Because Canada is one of the places in the world that has figured it out better than just about anyone else. Diversity, which causes divisions and wedges and rifts so many places around the world, is actually the source of the greatest strength. Our capacity to come together in our differences, to learn from each other, to challenge each other, but to grow together, is what gives our communities the resilience the opportunities, the creativity that we know our children and grandchildren deserve. And I can't think of a better example than right here with Canada's vibrant Pakistani community, a group that has given so much to our country. Your community is integral to who we are and to 
what we represent to the world. And the second view we brought that was a change, was a change in priorities. Together, we started talking about the middle class and those working hard to join it. Because we knew that the strongest economy is one in which everyone has a real and fair chance to succeed. And that if we made sure we were putting more money in the pockets of struggling moms and hardworking dads, we put more money in the pockets of the middle class and those who worked hard to be joining, we would create more confidence, more opportunity, more wealth for everyone. And that's exactly what we did. On a commencé à parler de la façon dont les gens sentaient qu'ils étaient laissés pour compte. On a fait du porte-à-porte, -porte, on a organisé des assemblées publiques et on a visité des centres communautaires à travers le pays. Et on a fait ce qu'on a fait de mieux, on a écouté. We heard about people's concerns as we went door to door, as we made phone calls, as we met people in community centers and mosques and church basements. We knew that people felt that economy wasn't working for them as well as it should and it seemed to be growing but it wasn't growing for everyone. So we listened to people sharing their hopes, their dreams, their concerns, their ambitions. And we put together a plan that would work and a team that would deliver. With your help, with the help of people just like you all across the country, our party saw a historic victory on October 19, 2015. And we changed the path of Canada. We changed the government of Canada two years ago. But there's one thing we did not change, and this is something that we need to remember. We didn't change Canadians. Canadians didn't somehow change when the government changed to become better, more positive, more engaged in the world, kinder to their neighbors. Canadians have always been big-hearted, open-hearted, compassionate. For a few years, we collectively gave in a little more than I, perhaps we would admit to the politics of fear and division. But when given an opportunity to listen to our better angels, to pull together and work hard together on building a better future, Canadians stepped up because Canadians remain good, open-hearted, compassionate, reasonable, positive people about the future, and that's what we worked with. That's what we did. So we got elected almost two years ago, and in the two years since then, we've, helped, we've put helping Canadian families, Canadian workers, at the very center of our agenda. Talking about better access to childcare, mental health support for our teenagers, lower taxes for the middle class. Ladies and gentlemen, the list goes on and on. But if you're looking for someone to thank, look no further than yourselves. It's because of folks in this room that we've been able to make a real difference in people's lives. So thank you. Thank you for your support, for talking about a better Canada with your friends, with your neighbors, getting out there and volunteering, for knocking on doors, for making phone calls, and for sharing ideas around the dinner table. Most importantly, thank you for continuing to believe in the liberal vision of a positive, inclusive Canada. It's because of your ideas as members of your local communities, as proud Pakistani Canadians, that we are building a Canada that celebrates our diversity. A Canada that does not tolerate racism, that believes in the empowerment of women and girls around the world with heroes like honorary Canadian citizen Malala Yousafzai leading the way. A Canada that will always protect our charter of rights and freedoms. That's the Canada I'm proud you're all a part of, and it's a Canada that I'm proud to call home. My friends, we've got by-elections coming up. The federal election will be here sooner than we think. We're lucky. We have momentum on our side. 
Since last year, we brought in more than 36,000 new Liberals here in Ontario and over 22,000 new volunteers right across the province to step up and be part of making Canada even better. Our movement keeps growing, our message is resonating. I've seen it myself. Many times I got to go down to Niagara a few weeks ago for the last day of action, going door to door, talking to people about the hard work we're doing to keep delivering real change every single day that grows this economy in ways that helps everyone, that builds a brighter future for our kids and grandkids. That's what people want. That's what we have to keep focusing on. You know, this evening I got here uh, straight from New York City where I was addressing the UN General Assembly and for the past three days I've been talking about Canada's place in the world. We've been challenged with uh, a broad range of difficult issues including the terrible plight of the Rohingya in Myanmar and I uh, continue to call to stand up together uh, to defend Muslim minorities and I told it directly to Aung San Suu Kyi and I've uh, expressed letters and we've been working with uh, countries like Indonesia to make sure we're continuing to put pressure uh, to protect minorities all around the world and all that international Good to be engaged and hardworking on the world stage. So good to be back at home talking about what we're going to do to build a better Canada all together. <laughs> so my friends, let's keep up the hard work. Together, we'll deliver a better Canada for all Canadians. Thank you all for being here tonight. I hope you have a terrific evening. Merci beaucoup, mes amis. Thank you very, very much. Pakistani community, we wanted to say thank you. Thank you very much for taking time and coming here. I know you had a very, very busy schedule because I looked at your schedule this morning and I was, to be honest, I was very surprised at how you made it here. Thank you very much. One thing I want to mention here that we all agree that we accomplished a lot in your leadership and we want to say thank you for that. There are a lot of things which we want to do and I'm sure that we, we would need your help and we want to tell you that our community is with you. One thing I want to specify which is very important and which is a uh, little bit different uh, in this event. And I think you, you just mentioned that you have X many new liberals join uh, this year. So I think you will notice in this community that the biggest accomplishment we have, you will see a lot of new faces here who weren't very active um, in the political process of Canada, but including myself, they're all here and I'm very, very happy to see them here. I have to say a great example of that. Someone who's been involved for a long time in politics but a proud member of the community. Salma Zahid just showed, joined us today. I think, uh, uh, and this all credit goes to our, our dear friend Ahmed Hussain, Adnan Bashir, who kind of were able uh, to kind of engage and create this community outreach, which we, we thought it's not there before. So again, uh, thank you very much. Thank you everyone who came here on behalf of the community. I, I think I sincerely thank you everyone. Without you, we could have not made this, this event the, the way it is right now. Thank you very much. As a, as a note here, um, we will have uh, a picture queue with the Prime Minister. Everybody will have an opportunity to take a picture with, with Prime Minister. So please make a good line on your left, on my left. And, and believe me and trust me, everybody will have an opportunity to take a picture. So be patient, please. Thank you very much again.